Thank you all so much for coming on Pink Out Sunday, and thank you for wearing your pink. It's it's wonderful to see this uh, this recognition. Um, since October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we want to take this opportunity to spread awareness about the disease that kills approximately 41,000 women each year. Today we wear pink because we support and care for those who are diagnosed. Now we know that in Jesus' day, Jesus didn't pink out. But we know that we have hope in Jesus and that one day he's going to come and he is going to heal all diseases. Praise his name. The color of pink is for breast cancer awareness. So we're having this pink out to support early detection of breast cancer. As a matter of fact, early detection of breast cancer through screenings for women and for men can save countless lives each year. So today, we celebrate awareness. So just allow me to take a few minutes to share with you some valuable information that could save your life or the life of somebody that you dearly love. One in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. It is the most common cancer among women in the United States. And breast cancer does not discriminate. It affects all ages, all races, all ethnicities, and all faiths. The most common risk factor is just being female and getting older. And that's all of us. While a family history of breast cancer can be a risk factor, um, it's actually having the genetic mutation, sometimes that is called the breast cancer gene, only accounts for 5 to 10 percent of all cases of breast cancer nationwide. When breast cancer is caught in its earliest stages, women have a 99 percent survival rate after five years. Early detection is the key to survival, which is why women over 40 should have a screening mammogram every year. We can also reduce our risk of developing breast cancer by making healthy lifestyle cho choices, like exercising regular and limiting drinks and foods that are not healthy for us. Today is not only a day about making a commitment in the fight against breast cancer, it's also a time to honor those that we love who have been affected by breast cancer. We come together to lift up the breast cancer survivors that we know who are fighting their cancer today. And we celebrate those of you who have fought breast cancer and have overcome it and beat it through tremendous faith, strength, and grace. And we also want to take time to reflect on the memories of loved ones who we've lost to this disease. So I ask you to bow your head in a moment of silence. Thank you. Now, we are going to hear the testimony of a breast cancer survivor. So. Sister Deb Thompson, would you come up, please? Well, um, I was thinking, I don't know if any of you got the thought recall, but um, the, uh, Cheryl Schaefer, my breast cancer support group leader, sent my name into the Butler Eagle of being a 28-year um, survivor of breast cancer. And um, they said so they did an article. But my story goes back, like I said, 28 years ago. And um, Ron and I always hunted um, deer in archery season so I was so thrilled I'm standing in my tree stand and the six point 
through and I shot it. I could put it, but I didn't find them. So I kept thinking, Lord, help me find the steer. Because I thought, well, if I wounded it, then it's not going to be any good for rifle season. But little did I know, it took me, I think, three, four hours now. It was a very, very hot day. And if you hunt at all, you know what happens deer if they lay too long, the meat spoiled. So I was really nervous. But I traveled around and around that woods looking for that deer. And lo and behold, he lay right at the foot of my Uncle Bob's tree stake. Well, I had never got it with you. Mom, had all, Mom was at work, so it was like, what, you know, what do I do now? I couldn't lift it. <laughs> so I called my Uncle Ken, and Uncle Ken came and helped me, helped me do it, get the deer, loaded it on the four-wheeler, and away we went. But little did I know that a few days later, I'd get a phone call, and the phone call was from the doctor's office, and they said, well, we have good news and we have bad news. And she said, the good news is your pap test came back good. But your breast cancer, the, your breast mammogram did not. And um, if most of you know that my mother died at 46 with cancer. And I was devastated. I mean, all I did was cry, cry, thinking, I don't want to leave my kids. You know? Because back 28 years ago, I fought really hard to get a mammogram because they didn't do it till you were 50 years old. So I, I kept fighting and fighting. So women like me are the ones, the reason now that women in their 30s, 20s, can get a mammogram. It's, it's because people fight. The insurance companies aren't fighting for you because they don't want to pay, but now they are because it's being found younger and younger women. And as you know, my niece Angie, She's went through a double mastectomy and uh, has to do more surgeries and stuff. And she's four. She was four. So see, it pays to be diligent in what you you believe in. So I guess what I'm saying about the all this is 28 years ago, I went to the doctor and Butler, and I also prayed a lot. And I knew God had control, but when something like this hits you, it's devastating. That you have no idea, like the bottom falls out. You think of all these things that you want to do, that you want to live for. But, um, anyways, I, I don't know. God always works miracles. I don't know how to explain this, but I had I, I set it up to have the surgery right away. I wanted it over with. And Ron's dad was going through treatment for prostate cancer, and he was at the heart doctor. And this little lady that was sick. Was Izzy. I remember the name. She had just went through breast cancer surgery and her hair came back in real curly. And she was thrilled that her hair came in curly. And she said, You don't want to mess with Butler. She said, You go to the best, go to McGee. Well, you don't just walk into McGee and get an appointment. But honestly, I, I, the, whole, the whole time I'm thinking, God, you work on miracles because Izzy called down, she got me right in. Dr. Williams was my doctor, and I remember going into the office and thinking, Lord, I can't do this. These women are all gray. They look awful. They don't have any hair. They broke my heart. I had to see so many women suffering the way they were suffering. And, and yet, you know, they even, they even had smiles on their faces because Dr. Williams was such a wonderful, healthy man, and he was... I, he was really, I, I would say, the, the best angel that God could have ever sent me. But he, lo he looked at my records and he said to, he said to me, he said, I can't tell you you have cancer. This was in November, three days before Thanksgiving. So I can't tell you you have cancer. That you have cancer. But he said, I'm going to go with a gut feeling. Because Butler had crushed all my slides. For some reason, when they sent them, they were crushed. So he didn't know because I had the biopsy, and once they do a biopsy, that's all they can do. So, anyways, so three days before Thanksgiving, I went in for surgery and had my breast removed, and, and then I had to go to the the oncologist and all that. But but down there, um, the rehab said, Deb, 
You'll never be able to use your arm for anything. I don't want you to even lift a purse. Well, I cried and cried and cried then because I thought, I like to hunt. What am I going to do? So, anyways, the, the Dr. Williams, um, Dr. Williams came in and listen. He said, "You do whatever you feel comfortable doing." He said, "You're not limited." He said, "You can do anything." And let me tell you, I worked hard to get my arm back because when they cut, they cut arteries and and veins and stuff and muscles and stuff. And uh, I went up and down that wall as many times as I could with my arm up to get it down, get it working. So then. I, he said, you have, you have to follow up with an oncologist. And so I went and saw the oncologist and he said, I think we got it all. But he said, hey, we're pretty sure. He said, 89% sure. And he said, it's up to you whether you have chemo. Well, I thought about the chemo and I thought, oh, Lord, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. And so he said, the oncologist said, well, it's up to you. So. I thought about it and it was just like a light opened up and it said, if you don't do it and the cancer comes back, you'll always wonder, did I do the right thing? So I opted for the chemo. And I remember going to a ladies retreat that January, I was to start the treatments. And, and um, I asked them to pray for me and they did. And I said, I just want you to pray that I don't lose my hair. I said, I don't want to lose my hair. And I think that's every woman's it's, I don't want to say it's vain, but it's, it's hard to lose your hair. And so I didn't lose my hair, let me tell you. The first treatment, I got my hair cut real, real short, and I thought, well, if I have to lose it, it won't be so bad. But I didn't lose it. Nope, did not lose it, but I got so sick. Then on the third treatment, I told Dr. Williams, I'm not doing this no more. I can't. And he, he come up to me, and I, and I just loved that man to death because he came up and he said, listen, you're already halfway through. He said, and he gave me a big hug and he said, you've got this. He said, you could do this. I ended up in the hospital. I had my appendix out after that. You know, I had all kinds of things thrown at me. But I always look back on that, hunting that deer because I always thought, God directs our paths. He does. And he leads us where we need to be. And I'll tell you what. It's been a great ride. I love my kids. I prayed that I used to sit in the chair downstairs and say, I want to see my kids grow up. They were, they were young. I, would, I didn't want to die young. Nobody wants to die young. But uh, fear overtakes us sometimes. But um, I remember the girl, Jen, come home from college to help the girls in school. And we just worked together. And we got through it, Ron, you know. And Bonnie, Bonnie was a lifesaver. Every time she'd take me to chemo, if, if, if my family wasn't available, she was always, she always laughed and carried on. But people, God places people in our lives to get us through these trials. And I'm sure all of us have been through things. I mean, cancer's hitting really hard around our area right now. And uh, I think of, uh, you know, all the things and uh, all the treatments that we have to go through and do because we, we trust God that he's leading us in the right direction. So I've been many places. I, I went from uh, home care to teaching at, um, or to being a supervisor type at, at Mid-Atlantic. And um, all these posters were made by the girls at Mid-Atlantic. And I saved them all because um, when I worked with the VA, we did a breast cancer walk for the veterans. We called it Walk with a Veteran, Support Breast Cancer Awareness. The girls all came and we, we uh, went around the facility pushing wheelchairs and stuff. You know, God places us where he wants us to be, to be that light. And uh, it's been a wonderful ride. I could never give God enough glory and praise for what he's done and what he's doing. Um, you know, he leads us wherever he wants us to go. So that's my story. I mean, I, I, I didn't take any notes because when you go through something like this, you remember and you want to always look back and thank God for where he's brought you from. And he's given me eight grandkids. So, I, I mean, I've had a great life. And, uh, you know, and I always remember Ed Bowser getting up and testifying. And Ed was pretty young when he died. I don't know the exact age, but he had a lot of health issues. But I remember him saying on his birthday, he said, I thank God for one week here. 
I thank God. He's been good to me, and he's been good to our family. And uh, so my thought is this: is don't be fearful of breast cancer. Um, the earlier, the better. Uh, go through the treat. Go through the uh, mammograms. They're not pleasant. Let me tell you, not at all. And um, but it's worth it because uh, early detection is the best key to anything. And uh, uh, Angie had no idea that she had cancer. She just went in for a mammogram. But see, it does pay. And if you you know need support or anything, you know, I'm here to help you through it. Um, God loves you. God loves you know all of us, and He will get us through. So I look back on that deer, and I think God had me travel around and around that hillside for that deer. You know, in the end, I got to find it. In the end, God gave me. 28 more years of life, so I'm saying, thank you. Deb, yeah. uh, so you've been cancer-free for 28 years, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Yeah.